Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to do is introduce you to simple random sampling. And to explain this, what I've got here is a set of 15 balls. And you can see that they've got the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 on them. Now if I take this collection, then this collection is defined as our population. Let's just write that in as the population. And from this, if we were to take these balls and put them in a cage, something like this, and we were to spin the cage and then release one ball and record the score, put the ball back and then repeat this two more times, then what we would have would be a random sample of size 3, three balls being taken and recorded. Now if we were to say let x be the random variable, we'll just write it as rv for short, let x be the random variable and we'll say that it's the score on a ball, okay, that we take out. And if we were to construct a probability distribution table, then we'd have our observed value x, and we would see that that observed value could be a score that was either a 1, 2, 3, or a 4. So if we just put those scores in here, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then we can look at the probability that our random variable x equals that particular score. So for a score of 1, you can see that we've got 3 balls with a score of 1 on, so that's going to be 3 out of 15. And for 2, we've got 2 balls that have got a score of 2, so that probability would be 2 out of 15. For a score of 3, I can see that we've got 1, 2, 3, and this one here, 4. So we've got a probability of getting a score of 3, which is 4 fifteenths. And finally, for 4, you can see we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so that would be 6 out of 15. And that should total 1 if you wanted to check that. Now, in this experiment, we're taking out a sample of size 3. Three balls are being taken. And we could find that we get various different samples if we did, repeated this experiment many times over. I mean, for instance, let's just list down, say, a few of those possible samples that we could get. We could find that we get three balls exactly the same, two, two, and two, for instance. Or we could get three that are different, say one, two, and three. Remember that when you get a sample, it could be that they're in a different order. You draw out a two, a one, and then a three, and so on, okay? For something like this, if you wanted to see how many different samples we could get, then for the first value, there would be four different balls that could come out, four different scores, that is. And there'll be four for this one, and there'll be four for this one. In other words, the number of different samples that we could get would be four by four by four. Four fours are 16, 16 fours are 64. So there's no way that I've got room to, or time in fact, just to list them all out. But let's just say that we take a general sample and what we do is we use capital letters to represent an observation within our sample. And for the first observation, we call it X1. The second one would be called x2, and this would go on all the way down to xn for however many there were in our sample. Now for this particular one, we've got three in our sample, so it's going to go down to x3. x1, x2, x3 then. Now when we do simple random sampling, what we've got to make sure is that every one of these samples that we take has an equal chance of being selected. Now, when we do take these 
observations here, x1, x2, x3 in this case, we must also make sure that two conditions are met. And that is that each one of these observations is taken from the same population. And the other condition is that each of these random variables is independent of the other one. And we can see that that's the case because, as I say, we put the ball back into the cage as soon as we had taken one out. And so, in general, if we're looking at a simple random sample of size n, it consists of the observations x1, x2, all the way down to xn. And it's drawn from a population where x with this subscript i satisfy the following two conditions. And that is, they have the same distribution as the population from which they are drawn, and b, they are mutually independent random variables. So, I hope that's given you some idea then of what we mean by a population, what we mean by taking a simple random sample of size n. Now, in my next video in this series, we'll be looking at what we mean by a statistic, and we'll also then go on in further video tutorials to look at the distribution of the sample mean and the mode and the median. Okay?